Hi guys, hello boys and girls, and hello my dear fellow foreign English speakers, that's me, Robbie from EnglishHarmony.com, and welcome back to my video blog. And uh, this is going to be one of those uh, question and answer sessions whereby I'm answering to emails that my blog visitors have emailed me, obviously, right? So the first email uh, is about a particular problem faced by this person. And uh, he described the problem the following way, right? So he can have conversations with anyone and he can understand and reply, but he's not as fluent as he would like to be. And uh, in his own words, quote, I'm not able to use a lot of vocabulary because it's very difficult for me to memorize words. Therefore, my written skill is also very bad. I commit a lot of mistakes in spelling when I write something. So uh, he basically requests me to give some advice. So first things first, it's of the utmost importance not to perceive all aspects of the English improvement at the same time. So you're saying that you are not as fluent, meaning you can't speak as fluently as you would like to. And then you kind of make the connection between that and your written skill, right? So you're saying that therefore my written skill is also very bad. Right, so I gotta let you know that there is no direct correlation bet you, between your overall fluency and your written fluency. Obviously, obviously, if you can't speak at all, for instance, right, chances are that your written fluency is also going to be very bad, and vice versa. But what I'm trying to say is that there's a lot of people who can speak no problem. Well, at the same time, they struggle with writing and quite the opposite, which is actually the, the, the most typical case scenario. A lot of foreigners are very good at, at, at writing. I was going to say at speaking, but that's wrong. At writing, you know, just because the, the traditional English teaching methodology revolves around writing, you know, grammar, writing, all that kind of stuff. And speech is neglected, you know, so you typically you would be able to, to write much better than you would speak, you know. But your situation is, you, you, your fluency is, is somewhat lagging behind and your writing skills are also not, uh, not the way you'd want them to be. So you're kind of making the connection, therefore my writing skills are also bad and I uh, make a lot of mistakes in, uh, in spelling. You have to first of all perceive each area separately, right? When you're um, talking about your oral fluency skills, focus on speaking only. When it comes to writing, that's when writing practice comes into the equation, you know? In order to be good at writing, you got to do a lot of writing practice. To be good at speaking, you got to speak a lot, okay? And uh, when it comes to vocabulary, right? When you write, it's... Uh, most likely that your passive vocabulary is going to manifest itself in the process, okay? Whereas when you speak, that's when you would use your active vocabulary, okay? Because um, speaking is, is normally associated with being able to improvise, being able to, to say something without much thinking. Whereas when you write, you can tap into your passive vocabulary, choose better words and stuff like that, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say basically. First of all, perceive each area of your English improvement separately on its own and work on it separately. Obviously, one can follow another. You can do some writing and then you can talk about it. You know, you can exercise your, your speech even as you write, you know, and that's actually the best, the, yeah, the best case scenario. You write as if you're speaking, you know, and that's how I learned to write. And I realized that that's the best way to write. And I've been giving this advice to my, my followers and my blog for years now. And people find that technique really, really useful, you know, and helpful. So basically focus on each area. Don't fall for the trap of thinking that if you somehow magically improve your general vocabulary skills, then you'll be able to speak better and write better. There is no such thing as general skills, you know. It is what you do. If you acquire certain vocabulary while speaking, 
you're going to be able to use that vocabulary when speaking and also writing, you know, but predominantly speaking. If you acquire certain vocabulary while writing, okay, maybe you read something and then you write about it and you use the same vocabulary, you know, chances are that that word is going to be committed to your passive vocabulary, meaning that you may not be able to use it when speaking, you know, but the fact of the matter is that you got to be practicing there's no two ways about it. You cannot just expect somehow magically absorb some knowledge and then use it. You got to be practicing. When it comes to fluency, you got to speak a lot. When it comes to writing, you got to write a lot. And when it comes to vocabulary building, you got to do it contextually. You know, phraseology, word combinations, you know, contextual learning is the key here. And you may want to click on this link to check it out and see how easy it actually is to acquire new vocabulary words as, as part of context you know contextual learning is the king so that pretty much answers this question and moving on to the next one i'm not going to bore you my friends for too long i'm not going to make this into a half an hour long video this is the second email and uh, we'll call it a day after that so this person expresses following problem right when he's um on his own he feels like he can achieve anything right and he's super super confident and i can totally relate with that you know oftentimes when i'm uh considering a specific problem you know and i imagine how i would go about it in real life i i feel on top of the world you know I, i'm feeling super confident but then what he says is that Whenever he's dealing with real people, you know, face-to-face -face interaction, his confidence gets shattered, you know. And he says, um, yeah, that other people's presence affects him and basically how to deal with it. It's not actually something that unique. I would imagine that everybody, the, the most confident person in the world, gets ever so slightly affected by other people's presence. It's only normal, you know, that you would behave slightly differently in front of other people compared to, to the way you'd be behaving just when you're on your own, you know? Even now when I'm talking to you, I'm kind of on my own, but I know for a fact that this video is gonna get published on my YouTube channel, so therefore there is this expectation, there is this kind of feeling as if someone's watching me a little bit, you know? So I do behave slightly differently, you know, when I speak completely on my own, when I don't even use the camcorder, I would imagine I'm even more confident because there's no restrictions whatsoever. So it's completely normal to feel somewhat different, but it becomes a problem when you feel that it's affecting your ability to perform big time. So if you were not able to, and obviously this person has that particular issue, right? You, they, they can't talk in front of others you know it's, it's very difficult so the, the solution is first of all practice 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 an awful lot whenever you have a chance to to interact with others talk in front of others just just do it try and tell yourself that who cares who cares what the outcome is going to be you know what is the worst case scenario? Always try and figure out the worst, the absolute worst case scenario, right? So imagine yourself facing um, a shop assistant in a shop, for instance, a very simple and plain scenario, right? So you might be even freaking out speaking with a shop assistant and I can totally relate to that. Years ago, I was the same, right? I would be able to speak on my own, whereas speaking with people in shops and other institutions was a, a challenge to say the least, right? So you just gotta do it, you know? Just jump in head first, jump into deep end, you know, as they say. So it's a sink or swim situation, right? And uh, the worst case scenario would be, what would, would it be? That you wouldn't be able to say anything and that the shop assistant would be laughing at you. And if you think about it, Obviously, it's not the case. Who would be laughing at you? That'd be very rude. Obviously, there is a remote possibility that that might happen. But in reality, that is not going to happen because people have to be 
especially in professional environments, they have to be quite friendly and they have to respect their customers and stuff like that so they would not laugh at you. So the worst, if you think about it logically, the worst case scenario would be they would just ask you a question, ask you the question twice, for the third time, whatever. But the point being, it's not as bad as you think, you know? It's the fear from the unknown. If you just have that concept in your head that you're faced with another person and then you're thinking, what it's going to be like? What's going to happen? They're going to laugh at me. I'm going to, I'm not going to be able to talk or whatever, you know? There is this abstract fear. So that is your biggest enemy, the abstract fear of the unknown. And that terrifies people, you know? That terrifies even me. So what you got to do is be specific. Try and think about it. Try and imagine the real life scenario. And then try and outline the worst case scenario. What's the worst that could happen? And then tell yourself, okay, so if this is the worst thing, if the worst thing is whereby I can't say anything and then the person is kind of going to give me some more pointers as to what I may want to say or whatever, you know, it's not that bad now, is it? It's not as if someone's going to punch me in the face or whatever, you know, it's, it's not that bad. And chances are you're not going to see that person ever again anyway, you know. So by this, by employing this particular strategy, you can um, alleviate a lot of stress and anxiety and actually start putting yourself in those situations. You know, I'm not saying that you have to put, it, put yourself in front of an audience and start talking without any preparation or whatever. I'm just talking about like simple scenarios, having a, a very small chat with people and stuff like that, you know, and then gradually you would be building your confidence you know and obviously when it comes to events such as interviews and speeches and presentations and so on and so forth that's when you gotta do some real preparation but uh, as far as simple face-to-face -face communication goes you just gotta distance yourself from the abstract fear think of the worst case scenario and then just do it okay there is no two ways about it, you know. If you don't do it, you're not going to get over it, you know. It's as simple as it sounds. Well, obviously, it's easier said than done. It's, it is difficult. I know that. Being there, done that. However, if you just um, come, come up with a worst-case scenario and distance yourself from the abstract, from the, from the bigger fear of the unknown, it's going to become way easier, you know. It's going to be much easier, my friends. Okay, so I hope that this video is going to serve some purpose and that you're going to find it useful. And uh, thanks for watching, my friends, and catch you soon. Bye-bye.